Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside Talk Show. I'm Carla Elizondo. Inside Talk Show, it's an inside job. Starts from the inside out, people. I've been doing a lot of things and she lost a couple nails. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right. We are continuing the reading of The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. We're on chapter five, titled Increasing Life. You must get rid of the last vestige of the old idea that there is a deity whose will it is that you should be poor or whose purpose may be served by keeping you in poverty. I've touched on this a lot. This, if you've ever struggled with feeling guilty or feeling selfish or questioning people who do have money or feeling bad for wanting money or things, this is probably at the bottom of it. And it's okay. It's just this perpetual thought that has been passed down it's a programming. So let me read that again. You must get rid of the last vestige of the old idea that there is a deity, a god, something, <clears throat> some source, whose will it is that you should be poor or whose purpose may be served by keeping you in poverty. The whole idea of poverty is virtuous. If you are poor and lowly and you don't have a lot of things, that means you're holy and godly. But if you have nice things, that means you are not spiritual and you're removed from God. God loves you and wants you to live an abundant life. The intelligent substance, which is everything, which is everything and lives in everything, lives in you. It is a consciously living substance. Being a consciously living substance, it must have the natural and inherent desire of every living intelligence for the increase of life. Let's just look at nature. We are a part of nature. It's easy to get removed from it. For example, we talk a lot about um, the food we eat. We're so far removed, especially if you live in a big city that's not in some sort of heartland or farmland. We forget where our food comes from. We forget where our poultry, our meat, our goods, the food we eat, we forget where it comes from. We're so far removed from the process. But when we look at the process, it is always for growth and increase produces it keeps on producing um but we have to take care of it we can very much so and it's happening you know ruin the soil that's growing our food we must pay attention um, cultivate the land with healthy good things um you know not to get into anything but yeah like you know putting pesticides or stuff um toxins that ruin the natural um flora and fauna of the earth whole nother topic. Okay. So being a consciously living substance, it must have the natural and inherent desire of every thing, every living intelligence for the increase of life. Every living thing must continually seek for the enlargement of its life because life in the mere act of living must increase itself. We're always here for growth, for forward movement, to reproduce. That is the inclination, the natural inclination of life. Look at any species. You don't have to tell them to produce, recreate, reproduce. They just do it naturally. It's an instinct in them. There's something in us that wants to grow and to, not everyone has to have kids, but, you know, remember our thoughts. If you are a, you know, musician, the songs, an actor, those parts, um, a writer, the stories, those are your babies. You give birth to them. Every idea is a seed. Every idea is a child to birth, to come to fruition. Um, okay, so a seed dropped into the ground springs into activity in the act of living produces a hundred more seeds. Life by living multiplies itself. It is forever becoming more. It must do so to continue to exist. Intelligence is under the same necessity for continuous increase. Intelligence is under the same necessity for continuous increase. Every thought we think makes it necessary for us to think another thought. Consciousness is continually expanding. Every fact we learn leads us to the learning of another fact. Knowledge is continually increasing. There is no finish line. That's why I mentioned yesterday. To come knowing, I know, even if it's something you've heard before, even if it's something you've disagreed with before or agreed with, you're new today, hopefully. You've grown since yesterday. You've grown since last week. You've grown since last year. That's why it's so important to always think, take the time to think, roll it around and reassess. It's not comfortable, especially if it's things you disagree with. 
but it'll lead to a greater awareness, either greater conviction in what you do believe to be true, or an aha moment, a light bulb moment of seeing something through a brand new paradigm. That's growth. It's so wonderful. Every fact we learn leads us to learning another fact. Knowledge is continually increasing. Every talent we cultivate brings to the mind the desire to cultivate another talent. We are subject to the urge of life. In seeking expression for this urge, we are impelled to know more, do more, and to be more. In order to know more, do more, and be more, we must have more. We must have things to use because we learn and do and become only by using things. We must get rich so that we can live more. Rich, you know what I mean, but here he's talking actual monetar monetarily rich money. Right now, as we are here in 2021, the paper, the money, the dollars, whatever continent country you live on, whatever currency is how we get things in life. So it is not about the money. It's about the things money can buy. So do I really want money? No, I want breakfast. <laughs> do I really want money? No, I want clothes on my back. Do I really want money? No, I want a car to be able to take me to work. But all those things cost money. Until something changes, if we go to a barter trader trading system, we won't need the money. So it, in fact, actually is not about the money. But right now, the construct of how we live right now, money is the conduit that gets us the things we need. But that takes an exchange of money. And remember, money currency, it's an energy. Are we in that current or not? So in order to know more, do more, and be more, we must have more. We must have the things to use because we learn and do and become only by using things. We must get rich so that we can live more. The desire for riches is simply the capacity for a larger life seeking fulfillment. Every desire is the effort of an unexpressed possibility to come into action. So every desire you have is an effort of unexpressed possibility that wants to come into action. It's an urge that wants to be let out. It is a power seeking to manifest that which cause it is a power seeking to manifest that which causes desire. That which makes you want more money is the same as that which makes the plant grow. It is life seeking fuller expression. The only living substance must be subject to this law for all of life. Let me read that again. The only living substance must be subject to this law for all of life. It is permeated with the desire to live more. That is why it is under the necessity of creating things. Because the substance desires to live more in you, it wants you to have all the things that you can use. It is the desire of God that you should be rich. He wants you to get rich because he can express himself better through you if you have plenty of things to use in giving him expression. He can live more in you if you have ultimate command and the means of life. Of the means of life. The universe desires you to have everything you want to have. Nature is friendly to your plans. Didn't Einstein say there's one important question you have to ask yourself? Do I live in a friendly or a hostile universe? So nature is friendly to your plans. And who was it, Paulo Coelho, that said, you know, when you have a dream and a desire, the whole universe will conspire with you and help you bring it to pass to help you. Everything is natural. Everything is naturally for you. Make up your mind that this is true. Just make up your mind it's true for the next 30 days. Suspend disbelief in how you believe right now. And just believe that the, the world, the universe, the, the nature is for you and it's trying to help you. Everything is naturally for you. Make up your mind that this is true. It is essential, however, that your purpose should harmonize with the purpose that is in everything. Mm. You must want real life. You must want real life, real growth, not mere pleasure or sensual gratification. Life is the performance of function, and the individual really lives only when he performs without excess of every function, physical, mental, and spiritual, of which he is capable. You do not want to get rich in order to live swinishly for the gratification of animals of animal desires. That is not life. 
but the performance of every physical function is a part of life and no one lives completely who denies the impulses of the body and normal body a normal and healthy expression so yes feeling those desires whether it be a sexual desire whatever it is a food desire hunger um, that's normal but in excess and only living for that that throws off the balance and that's not health or wealth in any way you do not want to get rich solely to enjoy mental pleasures to get knowledge to gratify ambition to outshine others or to be famous all these are legitimate part are a legitimate part of life however a person who only lives for pleasures of the intellect alone will only have a partial life he will never be satisfied with his lot this is that duality it's both and physical and intellectual you do not want to get rich solely for the good of others nor do you wish to lose yourself for the salvation of humanity or to only experience the joys of philanthropy and sacrifice <laughs> this is where ayn rand comes in you know why do we, anybody, have that unhealthy inclination to sacrifice everything for everybody? Sadhguru also talks about this. It's impossible to be selfless. It's impossible to be selfless without yourself. Have you achieved the highest avatar, Buddha, spirit, conscious, Christ-like mind to be able to truly be without yourself? to reach that nirvana? I doubt it. <laughs> it's impossible to be selfless. So Sadhguru talks about being selfish, being inclusively selfish, not just being selfish for me and mine. I want my family to be safe. I want my friends to win. I want for me, I want for everybody. So whatever I want for me, I want for everybody, the world, be inclusively selfish. So whatever you want for you, for you too, for you too, for you too, for the world, be inclusively selfish as opposed to being exclusively selfish, just me and mine, my town, my country, my state, my part of the world, my team, whatever it is. So you do not want to get rich solely for the good of others, nor do you wish to lose yourself for the salvation of humanity or to only experience the joys of philanthropy and sacrifice. The joys of the soul are only a part of life. They are no better or nobler than any other part. It's when we pray certain parts and think some are better that we get into trouble. It's a balance. You want to get rich so that you can eat, drink, and be merry when it is time to do these things. You want to be rich so that you may surround yourself with beautiful things, see distant lands, feed your mind, and develop your intellect. You want to be rich so that you may love people, do kind things, and be able to play a good part in helping the world and find truth. But remember, that extreme altruism is no better and no nobler than extreme selfishness. Both are mistakes. That's one of my favorite lines in this book. Remember that extreme altruism is no nobler and no better than extreme selfishness. They're both mistakes. It's finding a balance. Get rid of the idea that God wants you to sacrifice yourself for others, that you can secure his favor by doing so. God requires nothing of the kind. I've recommended this book so many times. Um, Joseph Boehner the impersonal life. Read that book, please. If you're into any of this stuff, the impersonal life. What God wants is that you should make the most of yourself for yourself and others. Be inclusively selfish. And you can only help others more by making the most of yourself than in any other way. Isn't that the truth? That's the only way you're going to make anything better. Just better yourself. That's the only thing you have control over anyway. You can make the most of yourself only by getting rich. Thus, it is right and praiseworthy that you should give your best and best thought to the work of acquiring wealth. Remember, however, that the desire of substance is for all. It move, its movements must be for more life to all. It cannot make to work for less life to any because it is seeking riches and life in everything and in everyone. The intelligent substance will make things for you, but it will not make things away from someone else. Oh, 
The intelligent substance will make things for you, but it will not take away from someone else and give them to you. This is so important. You must get rid of the thought of competition. You must get rid of the thought of competition. Amateurs compete. Professionals create. Amateurs compete. Professionals create and collaborate. There's no such thing as competition. I've shared my little drawing here before of we have, we're raised with this mentality of, oh, where's my other little guy? Let me find it. Here it is. This is how we are raised. That there is, and this is the competitive mindset, that there is one pie. Look at my poor little nail. There's one pie and we all have to get a piece. So this person got this, wow, they're lucky. Oh, let me grab this piece. Oh, they're, let me grab this one. Oh, it's all taken. Everybody took it all. Jeff Bezos took all the money. That's not how it is. This is how it is. This is how it is. We all have our own individual pie. You have a whole pie. There is nothing, nothing that anybody has taken from you. Anything, and remember we talked about jealousy and envy. If you're jealous or envious, that's good. That's just showing you what you want. Me too, I want that too. Go after it. Congratulate the person. Be happy for them. Cheer them on. Hang around them. Ask them for coffee. Because you are who you surround yourself with. If you're around losers, people who aren't winning, that's who you'll be. But if you surround yourself with winners, people who are getting to where they want to be, that's who you'll be. You know, amateurs compete, professionals create and collaborate. Remember that. You are to create, not to compete for what is already created. You do not have to take anything away from anyone. You do not have to drive sharp bargains. You do not have to cheat or to take advantage. You do not, you do not need to let any other person work for you for less than he earns. If someone's winning or someone close to you and you get that uh, in your stomach like, oh, that could have been mine or why didn't it happen to me? That's competitive. Get out of that mindset. It gets you nowhere. That just perpetuates a bad, negative, pessimistic, jaded, cynical, bitter attitude. That will get you nowhere. And I know it's hard. It is, but it's just a habit. We talked about that this morning. Negative thinking, negative thoughts are habitual. A habit simply means something that you automatically do. You don't even think about it. It just happens automatically. It's a habit. You get up in the morning, you make your coffee. It's habit. You driving home from work or like a common route, you don't really have to put much thought into it. Sometimes you're like, wow, I don't even remember driving home. It's habitual. It's become a habit. It's on autopilot. That's the same with negative thinking. Pessimistic. Anxious. Worrying. It's just become a habit. That's all. Don't beat yourself up. It's just a habit. Our goal is to find positive thoughts to reach to as a habit. Is it work? Absolutely. Get into a program. Start, start studying things that teach you how to change your habits. The program that I teach, the program that I took, the program that I'm involved in. Like I said, if you have any questions, please contact me. It's a six-month program. It will literally shift and teach you how to change your thoughts. And it'll get you into a new habit pattern. It's pretty much CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Just looking at our thoughts, reprogramming, getting into a new groove, a new pattern. Remember, our brain, our mind, our mind is like a glove, a leather glove. We get it when we're little and we put our little hands in it over and over and over. And it just fits us like a glove. Every little piece of our fingerprint is in there. It fits nice and easy. But we do that because of our family, our friends, our society, our school, our religion, our politics, whatever we were raised in. That's what's comfortable and normal. Fits like a glove. And it and it, sometimes it's really bad, negative, dangerous, toxic. But that's home and that's comfort. So when someone like me gives you a new glove, try this on for size. It's good habits. It's positive mindset. They're like, ooh, that feels gross. Give me my old glove back. And I, I, it happens with me too. It's just like trying, you have a favorite pair of sandals and you buy a brand new one and it cuts you and it gives you blisters. You got to break them in. You have got to break your old habit 
Maybe you don't want to, you know, when you're ready. If you have negative thinking, if you just don't know how to stop it, call me. You just got to get a new habit pattern. Got to just get a new habit pattern. And it's possible. Our mind is amazing, right? There's so many studies. It takes, you know, 21 days, 50 days, 60 days, whatever to change a habit. Six months. Give me six months of your time. Your life will change. It truly will change. So it says you don't have to drive sharp bargains. Okay. You do not have to covet the property of others or to look at it with wishful eyes. No one has anything of which you cannot have the same. And you can have it without taking what he has away from him. You are to become a creator, not a competitor. You will become a creator by employing the higher faculties with which you have been endowed. Here we go, people. Perception, reason, will, memory, imagination, and intuition. No other form of life has given these creative faculties, was given these creative faculties. You are going to get what you want, but in such a way that when you get it, every other person will have more than he has now. That's a win-win. Seven habits of highly effective people. Covey, ooh, so good. Have it be a win-win. When you're winning and you're happy, everybody around you wins. It's so beautiful. So these, these higher faculties, these six higher faculties, we are given. Human beings. Every other form of life does not have these higher faculties. That's what makes us the apex creature. We have our five senses. See, hear, smell, taste, touch. So do dogs, cats, pigs, horses. What makes us different? These higher faculties. So take these higher faculties, these six higher faculties of perception, reason, will, memory, intuition, imagination. And in animals, it's instinct. We have this ball of six magical tools. They just have instinct and it's perfect. The closest we have is maybe intuition, the, the faculty of intuition. We get that little whisper. We get that little feeling in our gut, our sixth sense. Say we're in a forest and there's us and there's a little deer and we hear rustling of the leaves. That deer's gone. Doesn't even think about it. Instinct, gone. They don't think about it. Us, we're like, is that my husband coming back with the s'mores is that is it a bear it's like we think about it <laughs> and it could be to our detriment that's why we have to pay attention to our instinct our gut they're gone the instinct's perfect they ain't gonna get eaten for dinner us we've watched a lot of scary movies to know like oh who's here let me go open the closet and then we get you know attacked <sighs> that's the where the free will comes in too woof Okay, so you're, you are to become a creator, not a competitor. You will become a creator by employing the higher faculties, perception, will, memory, reason, imagination, intuition. No other form of life ha was given these creative faculties. You are going to get what you want, but in such a way that when you get it, every other person will have more than he has now. I am aware that there are people who acquire a vast amount of money by proceeding in direct opposition to the directions in this preceding paragraph. Those of the plutocratic type, plutocratic type, mm -hmm, that's a word that we don't use often, okay, who become very rich sometimes do so purely through their extraordinary ability on the plane of competition. However, sometimes, for example, in their contribution to the growth of industry, they unconsciously harmonize with substance in its movement toward the betterment of humanity. So when you do, because of course people make money and get rich through a competitive um, way, but it's hard. Those people aren't at peace. <laughs> Those people are not happy. And a lot of people around them don't like them, but they're afraid to tell them or they don't want to lose their money. My favorite quote of the week is, if you have to fight to get it, you'll have to fight to keep it. If you have to fight and struggle to get it, you'll have to fight and struggle to keep it. So really shifting the way you approach it. It's like working out. Do you have to fight and slump and is it torture and war to go to the gym? 
Or can you reframe it like I'm doing this for my body, I'm happy, I'm able, I'm grateful for my health, this feels good, and then you start seeing results and it changes. Or food, if you're used to eating really tasty, salty, fatty food, and you go switch to broccoli, at first it's like, oh, but once you start cleaning your palate, cleansing that palate, eating healthier, nutritious foods, it's not, oh, I'm missing out on all the good, gooey, cheesy stuff. Wow. This is really fresh and healthy and I feel so much better and I'm sleeping so much better and I feel so much better. That food will take on a whole new meaning. It's the way we think about it. Okay. So it says, um, however, sometimes, for example, okay, their contributions in their growth of industry, they unconsciously harmonize with substance in its movement toward the betterment of humanity. Rockefeller, Carnegie, Morgan, etc. have been the unconscious agents of the supreme power in the, ne in the necessary work of system systemizing and organizing productive industry. Their work has contributed immensely toward increased life for all. They helped to organize production and were, and were soon succeeded by the agents of the multitude who organized the machinery of distribution. The multimillionaires are like the monster reptiles of prehistoric eras. They play a necessary part in the evolutionary process, but by the same power which produced them will dispose of them. And it is well to bear in mind that they have never been really rich. A record of the private lives of most of this class will show you that they have really been the most abject and wretched of the poor. Mm. Riches secured on the competitive plane are never satisfactory and permanent. They are yours today and another's tomorrow. Remember, if you are to become rich in a scientific and certain way, you must rise entirely out of the competitive thought. You must never think for a moment that the supply is limited. You drop into the competitive mind the moment you begin to think that all the money is being cornered and controlled by bankers and others, and that you must exert yourself to get laws passed to stop this process. Your power to cause creation will temporarily disappear, and what is worse, you will probably arrest the creative movements that you have already instituted. I'll just end there, but yeah, so you drop into a competitive mind and your creative mind shuts off. Either you're in competition or creation. Think about this throughout your day. Are you in your competitive mind or are you in your creative mind? Are you in your conscious thinking mind or are you in your subconscious feeling mind? Because remember the emotions and the feeling mind are what shows up. Are you in the competitive or the creative? Remember, this is the only thing that will produce. When you're in your competitive, you fight. And there's no heart. There's no heart in it. There's no heart in it. Are you in the competitive or the creative mind? And it says, you drop into the competitive mind the moment you begin to think that all the money is being cornered and controlled by bankers and others. Complaining and whining and yes, as we talked about yesterday, do not let present results, the state of things in the world, dictate how you feel. If you are allowing the current situation in the world, whether it be political, health-wise, economy, you're a victim. Hear me out. When you allow the outside world to control the way you feel, you are at that moment a victim. You are at competition, arguments, you're contentious, even if it's unconscious. If you're blaming or pointing fingers, man, 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 man. if this was different, then this would be different. If that was different, this would be different. That's living from the outside in. You are dictating your life based on something outside of you. As opposed to starting your day with your eyes closed, your ears closed, everything. How do you want to feel? What do you want? Feel it. Then go into the world and act 
however you want. You're, look, we're creating all the time. You might as well take the reins. It's like we're either the driver and we're in the head of the engine and putting the coal in, meaning thoughts. We're shoving the coal in to burn this puppy to keep going because we're moving forward, whether you like it or not. Life keeps going. Or are you in the caboose being dragged around? Ugh, why, why are they going this way? Why are they going this way? No one's driving your train but you. We just have to take control and accountability. And that goes into complaining, pointing out the problem. Yeah, anybody, it's so easy to point out the problems that are going on. And it's not to diminish it, it's hard. But what's gonna change it? Remember, every single thing that is going on right now in the world is because an individual, which got spread to a collective, a thought pattern that was not kind, just, out of love, inclusively selfish, it's the opposite. And we're seeing the results of it. Whatever results we're seeing first started with a thought. And the only way it'll change is with a thought. We cannot fight the existing reality. We must create a new one and make the old one obsolete. Things will not change by fighting what is. We create something new. Just like the best example I, I Uber. Uber. The way we get around at, when it comes to the taxiing world. Schools. So talk about disruptors, Uber. They did not go to the taxi, the dinosaurs of old school taxis and say, look, we really want to change how this happens. Would you like to get on an app, Yellow Cab? No, because they wouldn't, because they dominate. Remember, and, and so Uber built their own app, person to person, one to one, driver to consumer, changed, disrupted the whole system. Now that's the new model, which is making the old model obsolete. Film, Kodak, y'all, Kodak, Blockbuster, woo, Netflix came, video on demand, streaming, buy Blockbuster. Did Netflix go to Blockbuster and say, hey, let's strike a deal. We really want to do streaming. Do you want it? No, they just did it. It made Blockbuster obsolete. Digital cameras, cell phones made Kodak obsolete. What else? Remember like here in California, Pac Bell, um, the old um, telephone companies for the landlines. Uh, bye bye now there's internet and wi-fi and frequencies and we don't even need i mean how many of us grew up with telephones plugged into the wall we don't need those anymore they're obsolete because a new model was introduced so that was a whole long way to say whatever is going on and it's something you don't like change the way you think of it first then take inspired action on the ideas that are coming, create, be creative. We need more creative people rather than competitive people. We need more creative solution focused mindsets than competitive problem focused individuals. That's the only thing that's gonna change the world. And there's so few far in between, right? That's why we still talk about Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. As always, I offer free calls every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Um, click the link in my bio, and I would love to chat with you if you have any questions. Hope you all have a wonderful week. I'll see you tomorrow.